My next guest has written an article we have up on LarryElder.com. The article is called, Do Lockdowns Save Many Lives? In most places, the data say no. It is from the Wall Street Journal. Check it out at LarryElder.com. He co-founded Cypress Semiconductor in 1982 and served as its CEO for 34 years, becoming the longest tenured CEO among all publicly traded companies, tech companies at the time. He went to Dartmouth undergraduate, graduated with a double major in physics and chemistry, and then went to uh, Stanford where he earned masters and a PhD, both in electrical engineering. Please welcome back to the program, Mr. T.J. Rogers, former CEO, director, Cypress Semiconductor Corporation. T.J., thank you for taking the time. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. T.J., what are we doing wrong with our response to the coronavirus, according to you and your article? Well, <clears throat> we are spending more time on politics and fighting bugs. That's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that creates delays, and delays can harm people. I really think that, that the governmental uh, medical establishment has done a really lousy job in, in talking about how severe uh, this thing is going to be and, and, and how many lives it's going to cost. They, they've used scare tactics to scare people into doing things. And the lockdown itself is costing lives. Uh, and the loss, of, the loss of, you know, months now and counting uh, economic loss is harming everybody in the United States. And that adds up to lives as well. Mm -hmm. TJ, your article talks a lot about how Sweden has responded to this coronavirus pandemic. And I pointed out that yesterday one of the hosts on CNN interviewed their chief epidemiologist. Tell me what Sweden has done, in your opinion, right, TJ. Um, they, they used a more intellectual, a, a more database approach. Uh, I'll give you just two examples. Um, uh, children, uh, you take kids K through 9. Uh, in Sweden, at the time they had to make a decision on lockdown, there were zero, zero children's deaths from COVID-19 in Sweden. So they said what, frankly, anybody, uh, you know, common sense would say, uh, and that is don't shut down schools. And they didn't. And they haven't had a problem. Second thing they said, which they didn't know completely at that time, now it's more well known, that 85 percent of the people who die from this uh, disease uh, are 65 or older, and I happen to be older than 65, so old people like me dying is not okay with me. Mm -hmm. But uh, they also have 99.2% of the people who die from this stuff have a secondary medical condition, many times age-related. So what the Swedes said is instead of shutting down the entire country, why don't we sequester uh, our seniors and try to keep them safe and let, let the rest of the country go on because we know that young adults will pass off the, pass on the disease that will build herd immunity. And they didn't say herd immunity at the time they did it, but that's what's happening. And uh, eventually our population will become more immune to this disease uh, if we let people interact normally. To me, those were common sense policies. Uh, in Sweden, if you look at, uh, compare them to the world, um, uh, relative to Europe, they're right in the middle, equal to France, uh, better than UK, Spain, and Italy, and not as good as Denmark, Norway. And that that's always been the the knock on them uh, that that they're compared only to Scandinavian countries. But they're also better than seven states in the United States. Seven. So you know, with all of what we did, with all the damage we inflicted on ourselves. Um, they didn't do that, and they didn't have all that damage. TJ, as I recall, the uh, chief epidemiologist at Sweden, even about the fact that they've got more cases and more deaths, says that in the long run, it may be the case that we have no more cases and no more deaths than the other Scandinavian countries in the long run. Yes, and, and that's true for Scandinavian countries. Uh, it's also going to be true for China. Uh, the other day I was trying to get a business call through to China, and I got a uh, lockdown, couldn't, couldn't talk to the person, and it's not Wuhan, it's not the same city, it's in a different city in a different province. And the point is, if, if uh, for this disease, for what we now know about it, and you got to remember, you can't retroactively go back and blame people for what they didn't know at the time, but having uh, young, healthy people uh, uh, call, give the, each other a cold, which amounts to a cold, 
and creating herd immunity will help. On the other hand, if you do what China did, which is you shut them down hard, which they can do uh, the way their government works, uh, then you are gaining that herd immunity, and that will mean there will be uh, re uh, it'll recur. The disease will recur, and that's happened. Uh, that's happened in Japan, and and I uh, and there are other countries where it will happen in the future. My guest is T.J. Rogers. Uh ex-CEO and director of Cypress Semiconductor Corporation. The article he wrote in the Wall Street Journal is up on LarryElder.com. TJ, what kind of grade would you give President Trump, given the advice that he was given uh, by people like Dr. Fauci, which turned out to be uh, insufficiently alarmist? Yeah. Uh, okay, first of all, <laughs> truth, truth, and, uh, truth and speaking on the radio here, I, I tell you, I never watched one Fauci Trump show hmm. ever because hmm. uh, I knew I wouldn't be able to make it through it. Um, the, to me, the, the entire Washington scene uh, is more about do the Democrats poke the Republicans or vice versa, who blames whom. Right. Uh, they're, they're not worried about killing germs. So that, that is, uh, th that's a problem now. Uh, uh, Fauci... Um, he gets he's widely lauded. You know, I read in the New York Times about him, and he's great. I read in the Wall Street Journal about him, and he's great. Right. Um, Trump uh, praises him. He must be a charismatic person, but I'll tell you, the CDC had horrible performance. If they'd have been a division in the company I ran for 34 years, that guy would have been fired. He's got a seven billion with a B budget. Uh, he. Decided it wasn't him, but the uh, CDC uh, decided you know, they screwed up the test. We were late in my testing. I happened to get suckered into looking rather than at, at television. I looked at the CDC website. They had a bad graph, literally an erroneous graph that showed the whole bell-shaped curve. And when I first looked at it the first day, you know, like a month ago, I said, hey, what are they making a big deal out of? This thing is over. Well, it turns out they now say that graph had mistakes in it, and they put in a correct graph. They didn't get good data on their website until late March. TJ, we're going to have to leave uh, it there. Do lockdown save many lives? His piece is up on LarryElder.com. TJ, thank you so much for taking the time. You're welcome.